today I want to talk about oak leaf hydrangeas and my snowflake hydrangea in particular because it makes such incredible pendulous flowers. And here's my question of the day. Oops. Do you guys use your dried hydrangea heads for inside decor? Do you use them in flower arrangements? Do you spray paint them for the holidays? What do you do with your dried hydrangea heads? And specifically, what type of hydrangeas are you drying? So here's what I'm doing with mine today. Now is the perfect time. If I wait too much longer, it's really going to be a problem because they're going to get too dry and they start doing this. They start turning brown like this instead of just staying kind of tawny and papery, but you can tell that they're good for drying when they literally sound papery and when you crush them, they've got that kind of crispy sound. Now I keep these on a constant rotation in and out. So I do this every year. I cut them, I when they are dry, I do various things with them. But typically I all, always have one massive arrangement of them somewhere in my house. Sometimes it's on my dining room table, sometimes it's on my book table upstairs or whatever. And then when I cut a new bunch like these, then I toss the other ones that are probably a little bit past their prime. They're probably dusty and it's time to replace them with some fresher ones. And it's also a good time for them then for me to use a different container if I've gotten kind of tired of that one because they're typically there year round. I also love them because this time of year, I, I've said it before in, a, in another video, I'm just kind of sick of gardening. I'm sick of watering. I'm sick of fighting mosquitoes. I'm sick of fighting um, all of the Virginia creeper that is just everywhere. And I, to combat that, what do I do? Here's one of my coping strategies. I start thinking about the holidays. I think about Thanksgiving and I think about Christmas and sometimes uh, I'm embarrassed to say it, but I will even put on Christmas music because it kind of gets me gets me in the groove and I can kind of think about what my thematic is going to be for Thanksgiving and Christmas. So that's why I like doing this because I so often use them in my seasonal decor. So I've got my pruners and I've already clipped a couple of them. Now in the past, I have referred to making some oak leaf hydrangea chandeliers, which I did one year, which was incredibly fun. And I just clipped a lot of them and I kept the stems pretty long and I do cut back at a leaf node, but I keep them pretty long. I removed all of the foliage because it doesn't really dry well. And then I took all of them like this and in ju I just made huge bundles of them, hanging them at various lengths, like in a chandelier form. And then I put some absolutely beautiful kind of deep brown burgundy-ish ribbon on them. And then I suspended them one evening when I was entertaining, I suspended them around the garden just by a twinkle, by some twinkle lights. But I also sometimes have used these kind of, uh, these hydrangea chandeliers inside if I really wanted to do something that was a little bit over the top. I think these would be brilliant for a fall wedding. I just think they're so much fun. There's so many things that you can do with them. I've made them really, really long and cascading. Um, you could attach these to a long rope or a ribbon. You could do a swag of them across your, oh, your fireplace or something like that. Though for me, it's a working fireplace. That might be a fire hazard. But there's all sorts of things you can do with them. The easiest thing, of course, is just to cut them and put them in some kind of container. And today I'm doing this using this fabulous metal urn that my friend Nev gave me. It's pretty large. It's not real heavy, but it's definitely formidable. It's got an opening, a diameter here of probably about eight to 10 inches. Now you'll notice inside I've got something kind of scrappy and scruffy here. And I typically, in my flower arrangements, I don't use Oasis. I just use something that's a little bit more environmentally friendly, like chicken wire or something like that. Um, but in this case, I got some flowers and 
and I saved what they were nestled in. This is wet foam oasis, though it could easily be dry foam. It wouldn't make any difference because these are going, this is going to be a dried arrangement. So what I want to do is basically just keep this in place because one thing about these flower heads, as you guys have no doubt discovered, this variety could be kind of heavy, a lot heavier than say dried Annabelle's or some other more delicate varieties. These with a lot of heft can be pretty top heavy. So I want something that will secure them in place. And it's just as easy as this. And if I want, I can remove the ones that are brown and crispy, or I don't have to because I really like that tawny look. And I'm thinking about fall as I'm doing this, and these fall colors will just be brilliant. Now, some of them that I put in first will be kind of like a skirt around the edge. And they'll kind of cascade down and I don't want to, I'm doing this now because I really don't want to leave instead of waiting till fall because we've still got a lot of summer left, a lot of hot, steamy, uh, sunny weather, which will brown these even faster. And I really, I really want to harvest them when they are looking their best. And that is about right now. Actually, I probably should have done this a week or so ago but we do the best we can, don't we, when we've got the time to do it. Again, this is a, snow, a snowflake oak leaf hydrangea, but oh my gosh, I did one, I need to show it to you later. I did one with the really thick ones from um, Southern Living Plant Collection, the Terra hydrangeas. Oh my gosh, it was incredible. I'll show it to you. It's already on my library table. Look at how long this one is, you guys. This one is a good 12 to 15 inches. That is just incredible. And I love the coloration. It's kind of this burgundy pink, white, lime green. And it will stay in this color palette for a while before it really, it will, it will dry when it's inside. But then it's already in place and I don't have to worry about it. Another reason that you wanna do this now is they are still friable and they're not so crispy that when you move it around from one location to the next, that it would make a mess everywhere. Now this is what I mean by a plant that gives four seasons. Some people won't plant anything that doesn't have fragrance. Some people won't plant anything that doesn't bloom in spring. Some people won't plant anything that requires too much pruning. For me, I pretty much won't plant anything that in some way I can't use cut in the vase for an arrangement. That's what I consider the essence of garden inspired living is being able to bring the outdoors in. And some of these, Stuart, if you don't mind showing, not only are these petals so pretty, but look at these tiny little buds. So this is an arrangement that can be appreciated not only close up or not only from afar, but also from close up. And then I've got some, some that are sweet that aren't quite so big that kind of can be used as filler later on. This type of thing gives me so much joy. And my garden isn't real large. Um, you guys, most of you, unless you're, you are new to the channel, most of you know the different garden rooms that I have, but it's only 0.21 of an acre. I don't, sometimes when I, when I visit really large gardens, I get a little bit overwhelmed because they're so beautiful and they've got so many different outdoor spaces, um, pergolas and outdoor kitchens and, and all sorts of 
of outdoor areas. And, and that's beautiful. And it's again, knowing what you want and what your family wants. For me, I don't want something that big because I really want to have a very intimate relationship with my garden. And I think that's hard to do when it's too big. The same thing if you've got a really, really large house. How do you decide where you wanna have your coffee in the morning? And how do you decide where you wanna have your glass of wine in the evening if your home and gardens are so large and you don't have, you just have so many different options that, options that you don't have that one space that's just really special to you. And I like things that I'm intimate with. And so I like revisiting. It's probably why I've lived in the same house for so long that I like developing a relationship not only with my garden, but with my home over time. Does that mean I'll never move or never change? Uh, no, but it does mean that I make an investment in where I live. And I, I love the fact that my garden is just the right size for me. And by the way, Stuart, if you'll pan to the back, look at how gorgeous that Rudbeckia lacinata looks right now. I need to do, that's one of my favorite things this season. And at, at the end of every season, I like to record what my favorite things for that gardening year were. And definitely that is one of them. Now I know some people like to leave these on for winter interest. And there will be some in the back because this oak leaf bed is so massive. So there will be plenty that will stay on the plants for winter interest. Looks very pretty when the snow nestles in between the petals. Okay, now let me kind of do a 360. I've got a little bit. I think that's looking gorgeous, don't you, Stuart? Mm -hmm. So let's see. And if some of them have already turned a little crispy, that's okay because what I'll do is instead of putting it in so that that aspect is front and center, I'll just do it so that the less crispy side is front and center. Now those on the edges that I consider to be the skirt of this arrangement, you see that I positioned them so they're kind of cascading over the side, but the ones that are in the center, I'm doing more upright. And these, by the way, don't even have to be secured inside that foam because these are supported by the other blooms around them. And I just love, my friend Nev knows how much I love footed vessels, whether I foot them myself with a candlestick or something, um, or the container itself is footed. I just think it makes the whole thing that much more elegant and that much more special. Now this as a centerpiece for Thanksgiving would be absolutely just exceptional, I think. It, I used to my 90 year old mother-in-law passed a year ago in February and I would always make a birthday dinner for her and quite frequently this would be the centerpiece because her birthday was in November. That and she got her own signature birthday cake every year. Pave tart avia chocolate tart and I miss her but she lived to be 90, actually on the cusp of 91, so she led a good life. And she always used to say that she did not know how something that looked like my garden could grow in Oklahoma. 
and I always took that as the supreme compliment. Okay, Stuart, do you see any spots that I'm missing? I see one more void I might want to fill. Kind of, this is one of my QVC tables, by the way, you guys, and it's perfect for this type of thing. So I might want one more right there. I love large round entry tables and, and book tables. This would be magnificent in a library, in a restaurant. Um, I think it would be really incredible. And most importantly, it's free. So to the extent I can cut from my own garden, I always do. Now, I always say, people will say, well, how do you know when to stop? Well, when I stop is typically when I run out of time. I've got one more that I think needs to cascade over the side. And then I, I will call it a day. Now you say, there are still some left on there. You maybe can't see them, but there's all sorts of remaining flower heads in the back and tucked underneath the foliage. And those I will probably just leave to dry and look pretty and they'll continue to get brown and dusky rose color and I will love that and in the fall it will be beautiful because why I'm sick of gardening right now <laughs> but in the fall I will get my gardening mojo back I think this is one of the reasons people go on vacation in July and August. So there you go. I hope you love it as much as I do. An oak leaf hydrangea arrangement from dried oak leaf flowers. fashion epilogue for today. My earrings are compliments of my oak leaf hydrangea that's in my backyard. And all kidding aside, wouldn't these be so fun to use on Halloween? You could stick some French wire hoops through them, wear them in your ears, and you could come as an oak leaf hydrangea or as the plant lady, as Stuart said. I think that would be really, really fun. Um, my top comes from my son, Johnny. It was made in India. He lived in India for a fairly long time, and he would get me some of these loose shirts. I love them because they remind me of him, but they also are just perfect for the summertime because they are loose, 100% cotton. My earrings came, let me think, what do I have in? Oh yes, these came from an antique shop in Bloomington, Indiana, right near the campus of Indiana University. I love them because I love beadwork earrings and I just love large earrings in general. As you guys know, it's kind of a signature statement of mine. My britches are made well. I got these at Nordstrom Rack. I love them because they are really loose they're lightweight and you can dress them up or down obviously today I've got them dressed down with some of my work sandals these are some of those foot form sandals I get off of Amazon that I love so much I've got them in multiple colors so there you go if you stayed to the end that is your fashion ensemble for today